Item Number SCP-123 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-123 is to be held in a secured facility and is to be securely fastened to the top of a sturdy table by use of straps, chains, a net, or similar device. Absolutely no hooks shall be fastened to the device. The object and table should be centrally located in a room no smaller than 5 meters by 5 meters by 5 meters. No sensitive measuring devices should be used within 100 meters of SCP-123, as their measurements will be noticeably affected. More significantly, absolutely no objects should be inserted into SCP-123 except under experimental conditions. Transfer of SCP-123 shall be made with care and effort made to prevent the object from being shaken or jerked with notable force. SCP-123 shall not, under any circumstances, be transported over large bodies of water by any method. No personnel below level 2 must be allowed in the containment chamber with SCP-123. Any person interacting with the object should wear tight-fitting clothing that has absolutely no straps, laces, or other dangling components. Persons with long hair shall be requested to tie their hair back or wear a hairnet. Description Object is a gray geodesic sphere, 65 centimeters in diameter, consisting of 60 triangles. The areas between these triangles are empty, allowing the center of the sphere to be seen. The material the sphere is composed of is unknown, and upon the recommendation of Dr. Research into the material composition shall be limited to visual observation until further notice. SCP-123 appears to weigh about 3.62 kilograms, though its actual mass is believed to be much higher. The geodesic sphere is hollow, save for the very center. At the center of SCP-123 is what appears to be a black sphere, approximately one millimeter in diameter. No light can be seen being reflected off or emitted from the black sphere. The core also appears to exhibit significant gravitational force, which massively increases within the confines of the outer geodesic sphere. This gravitational force can be measured using sensitive instruments several dozen meters away. Within approximately three meters, the gravitational pull is apparent to any observer, with dangling objects beginning to be pulled towards the sphere. At the surface of the outer sphere, the gravitational pull doubles the weight of any object placed onto the structure. The inner sphere's qualities are apparent when any small object is inserted within the outer sphere. Any such object quickly accelerates into the object and disappears. Any liquid poured into the object also is sucked into the central sphere. Analysis has shown that light that nears the black sphere is curved towards the center. The amount of gravity exhibited by the inner sphere at its surface suggests that its mass is approximately 1,029 kilograms. Though the obvious gravity-reducing effect within the outer sphere means that its actual mass may actually far exceed even that. Note that such a mass would ordinarily imply a Schwarzschild radius in the order of 200 meters, way in excess of the approximate 0.5 millimeters actually observed, which can be considered further testament to the outer sphere's gravity-dampening qualities. Gases are affected by the gravity of SCP-123 and the atmosphere pressure at its surface has been measured at 205 kilopascals. However, gases are unable to penetrate the area between the triangles of the outer geodesic sphere. The reason for this is currently unknown, and is currently being studied. It should be noted that the outer sphere and inner sphere appear to act as one. Whenever the outer sphere is moved, the inner sphere follows. Further research is suggested into the nature of this relationship. Addendum. SCP-123-A SCP-123 has been suggested as a disposal unit. The researcher currently in charge of SCP-123, Dr. is concerned about the structural integrity of the geodesic sphere. All requests for disposal must go through Dr. or request a formal hearing with Level 4 personnel. Until further notice, all interaction with SCP-123 is to be restricted to experimentation. Command personnel agree that further research is needed to understand the durability of the outer sphere. Item Number SCP-283 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Due to the strange but harmless nature of SCP-283, it is to be kept in a secure box 
against the east wall of room E-107 at Site-137. Aside from that, SCP-283 can be handled by any personnel as long as they are observed by at least a level 3 member of staff who is to keep watch over SCP-283 to prevent petty theft. Description For all intents and purposes, SCP-283 is an ordinary rock, slightly mottled and worn from age and collisions, made of dark grey granite. It weighs just over 1 kilogram and is 10 centimeters in length. However, instead of following the usual route of gravity, SCP-283 is pulled in the direction of exact magnetic east. Close study reveals that SCP-283 is, in fact, falling around the Earth, as well as being affected by its odd gravitational pull. The rock was first found after investigation of poltergeist activity in Australia, reported as the phenomenon known as Minmin lights, which are in fact known to be According to witnesses, the rock purportedly hurtled across the plains, through the walls of a house and a car, and was eventually stopped by a mobile trailer home, where it remained lodged in the metal wall until the following morning. At first, Agent believed it to be attracted by some magnetic force, although subsequent testing has proved this false. SCP-283 is an ordinary granite cobble, apart from falling in the wrong direction. Said agent accidentally dropped SCP-283 and was forced to chase after it. The retrieval involved a minor head injury, but confirmed suspicions about its nature. Note from Dr. Wood. It has come to the attention of the higher level personnel that someone has been stealing SCP-283 for use as a paperweight. I don't care how zen it looks. Any further misdemeanors will be dealt with severely. Item Number SCP-385 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-385 is locked within a standard fireproof container at Storage Site-23. Experimentation with SCP-385 requires written approval from any Level 4 researcher. After the incident outlined in Report 385-C, all further testing must take place in a facility located within 5 degrees of either of the Earth's poles. Description SCP-385 is a waste-mounted harness, crafted from heavily antiquated leather and brass. A curled electrical cord connects a handheld push-button switch to the mechanism mounted on the front of the harness, which itself contains a superfluous set of interlocking gears and colored LED light bulbs. The harness has sustained significant impact damage. A damaged engraving on the front of the mechanism reads, Special Edition, 3 of Illegible, and Illegible by The Factory. Also retrieved with SCP-385 were a cardboard storage box and instruction manual. Both the box and manual feature a retro art style reminiscent of 1950s science fiction pulp illustrations. The manual describes the harness as a personal anti-gravity field generator and contains simple illustrations in the proper use of the device. When operated according to instructions, SCP-385 does create an energy field that counteracts the influence of outside gravitational forces upon the device and an individual wearing or holding it, as well as neutralizing their inertia. Measurements of velocity and direction with high-speed video cameras tentatively indicate that inertia is neutralized relative to the sun as the inertial frame of reference. Research to duplicate this effect is ongoing, but the mechanical components of the device appear to be non-functional. The harness will still produce the anti-gravity effect even when all mechanical components beyond the activation switch are removed. Addendum Except under strictly controlled conditions, Use of this device is invariably fatal, due to the speed of the Earth's rotation and revolution around the Sun. An individual removed from both the Earth's gravitational pull and momentum would either be flung into space, or experience a fatal collision with an object blocking their trajectory, which will at least result in the device's deactivation to allow for retrieval. SCP-385 was recovered from the room of a 13-year-old boy in shortly after what appears to be its first activation. It is unknown how many other SCP-385 mechanisms may still be at large, or how large the production run was. 
Interviewing the deceased boy's parents traced SCP-385 to a downtown antique toy store, where the device was purchased as a novelty. The store was found to be abandoned, and had not been occupied for some time. Downtown residents do not remember the shop ever being open. Item Number SCP-512 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-512 is held within the Site-77 Safe Object Repository. It is to be shut at all times, and testing during adverse weather conditions is forbidden. All outdoor testing proposals must be reviewed by Security Chief Anderson. Description SCP-512 is a stainless steel black umbrella with a nylon canopy and polished ebony crook handle. Maximum radius of canopy when open is 0.75 meters. Make and manufacture are unknown. A taped patch is visible on the canopy section. When open and pointed upward, SCP-512 exerts an upwards force in opposition to Earth's gravity in a roughly dome-shaped area directly above itself, with a cross-sectional area of roughly 1.77 meters squared. Precipitation and other objects will be suspended and deflected within this area of effect. SCP-512 has no effect when closed, or when held at a horizontal angle. Despite SCP-512's efficacy against normal precipitation, it is inadvisable to use the object during severe weather. Through an as yet unknown process, the item's anomalous effect causes the air above it to become extremely ionized. This interaction also causes electrical current to greatly increase in amperage while in direct contact with the item. This causes the threat of direct lightning strikes to become exceptionally dangerous to any individual holding SCP-512, as evidenced through the death of its original owner, as well as D-5233. Additionally, electrical current appears to travel across the surface of SCP-512, causing little to no damage to the item's structure. SCP-512 was recovered from a public park in Florida. Local emergency services had been summoned to evacuate the area due to reports of unusual lightning strikes. SCP-512 was discovered caught on a street lamp and fully opened, with evidence of several lightning strikes in the immediate area. Its handle was noted to be covered in ash. Foundation personnel intervened after local newspapers began reporting on SCP-512's anomalous properties. Addendum Testing Summary Upon recovery, SCP-512 underwent standard testing, through which its properties were determined. A range of items were held 4 meters above SCP-512 and then dropped, after which a mechanical apparatus would open SCP-512. Tested items include the following. 1 liter of purified water, dumped from a standard bucket. 1 liter of orange juice from concentrate. Approximately 1 kilogram of loose feathers. 1 kilogram of ice cubes. The assorted contents of junior researcher Renfield's bag to lunch. A standard running shoe. A standard watermelon. SCP-1108 A 5.4 kilogram bowling ball A 40 kilogram steel containment crate Testing materials slowed in descent approximately 0.5 seconds after SCP-512 opened, with the larger and less solid items coming to a stop approximately 0.35 meters from SCP-512's surface. All material will remain suspended in the air, unless made to slide to one side and resume freefall. Liquids and particulate matter are weakly repelled from the center of the effect, while more solid objects can be held in place with minor adjustments to SCP-512's angle. Addendum Experiment D-5233 Testing Item D-Class Personnel Testing Procedure Object taken to Site-77 Outdoors Field for testing of the vertical distance of the anti-gravity effect. An unexpected severe storm occurred during testing, and the rain repelled properties of SCP-512, coupled with exceptionally low pressure, caused a suction effect in the region directly above the object. SCP-512 pulled the D-Class, D-5233, holding it, 
upward into the air and drifted on prevailing wind currents. D-51233 was able to hold on to SCP-512 as it rapidly gained altitude. D-51233 glided over Site-77 perimeter and into the surrounding area. It was observed that D-51233 quickly developed skill in altering angle of anti-gravity effect to allow for semi-controlled flight. A helicopter was launched to pursue object and D-51233. The object was recaptured following a lightning strike. D-51233's remains were not recovered. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.